I got the horse right here. Hello, racing fans, and welcome back to another edition of Handicappers Corner, brought to you by the Derby Bar and Grill. I'm Mike Heads, along with Drew Forster. We're going to go through the uh, Sunday, Sunday, August the 16th, races at Hastings. Uh, we have seven races on tap. Uh, should be a great afternoon once again. Uh, supposed to get a little rain, uh, a little sprinkling of sprinkling. rain in the next couple of days, but uh, hopefully uh, the weather will rebound and be nice again for the weekend. Yeah, hopefully we got a decent Sunday card of course, 150 post parade yep. and then we go back to the Friday nights. Uh, as you mentioned, seven races on tap. The first one is a maiden 25 for Phillies and Maris, going six and a half furlongs. A field of five. I landed, I landed on the five uh, collateral out of the Troy Taylor barn. Uh, David Lopez is in Seattle riding the mile that yeah, day. Yeah, so is Richard and Hamill. So is Richard Hamill. Um, that's why they are not on the card today. Keyshawn Belgobin picks up the mount here uh, for David Lopez. Good second behind Race the Wind in a maiden special weight. Drops him for 25 collateral. Looks like the horse to beat in here. I put Ebony Cat in the second spot out of the Barb Heads Barn. Good fourth behind Casual Belief in Tessana. Tessana is in here, but she ran back and didn't run that good uh, in her third start. I think Ebony Cat can improve, and I like that work August 9th and 48 and 1, so I put her in the second spot in Tessana out of the Gary Safe Bar and I put in the third spot, knocking on the door, uh, a second, third, and a fourth in her three lifetime starts. But I do like collateral. I went five, four, and three. Yeah, I don't have a lot to add. Uh, Keyshawn Balgobin gets a chance to ride for, tro for Troy Taylor uh, with, with Richard Hamill and uh, David Lopez out of town. Uh, but, uh, you know, collateral is the horse to beat. I mean, that was the first run since February. Yeah. yeah, horses and speed be dangerous. Uh, uh, looks like can even doesn't need to move forward, but likely will. I yeah. went five, four, and three. I agree. Ebony Cat's your next best horse. Ran much better. Blinkers off last time, and Tisana's third. Uh, five, four, three for me. Like Drew in the opener on to race number two. Maiden four thousand dollar fillies and mares going a mile and a sixteenth. Uh, I ended up on the three bays gal. No real secret here. Looks like she's drawn a field. She must beat off of her runner-up after yeah. the cute little vixen. Time was, it looks fast, the track was fast that day, uh, but you know, still it was a good runner-up. Anything effort. close to that effort is going to yeah, be Gotta win the money. Here. Rosalie B ran third, a guy put her in for second, and Princesa Del Fuego stretching out. Uh, she has some distance in her pedigree, and she's got running some even races, sprinting, so I put her in for third. She seemed to be the next best alternative for me, but uh, I went three, one, and five. I don't have a lot to add. Base gal, as you mentioned, looks like the horse to beat in here. Rosalie B moved forward uh, a much better race much better race, better race off the time. pace. Yeah, yeah. Right. It was on, on the pace all the time early in the year. But, yeah, uh, and now yeah. they've taken her back off the pace, Good and uh, she, she ran well in, in, into the race, and Reyes sticks with her, so I got her in the second spot. And I put Ziggy Meister, Pedro yeah, Alvarado, uh, rode her a couple fourths. Uh, then Balgobin rode her last time. Pedro gets back aboard her. Why not? 3-1-2 and two for me in the second. On to the third, three-year-olds and up, mile on the 16th, maiden 12-5. I went to the four heart set here. Uh, that race two back that he was claimed out of for 16. Uh, only got beat a length by Rosie's Notice. Uh, you know, Rosie's Notice would look pretty good in here. I put a heart set on top. P.S. Betting on you has been knocking on the door. That was a very good second. Uh, or sorry, third. Just don't, don't be just under two lengths yeah. by uh, if we knew then. But that was for 12.5. Heart set's dropping out of 25. That's why I went with heart set. Heart set. And I put uh, one big promise. Uh, just the one start should move forward. Uh, in uh, his second start, Pedro Alvarado sticks with him, and he has blinkers. I went four, one, and five. Yeah, I didn't think there was much between the one, four, and five. I think they all have their attributes. Uh, the one, pay us betting on you, you know, was game on the head end. Yep, you ran, ran the race. Uh, the time was a little better than it looks like on paper. There was only four horses. I just don't know how race. tough if we knew then was. I know it was only four horse field. Everyone yeah, got to yeah. assume their position yeah. without working for it. Yeah. This is only a five horse field, so it's going to be an easy gig again to get position. And uh, it's when these horses get it back into a nine horse field where you have to work for position where things will change. Might take more out of. But, uh, but P.S. betting on you off of that race has to be very dangerous. And Amadeo re-rides for Cindy Krasner. I, I agree with Hart set very live in this race. Uh, Keyshawn Balgobin uh, riding. And, uh, you know, if the horse repeats the last that. One was, the last one was sprinting, too. Yeah, that, that, that race, two back was long. He's bred to go long. That was a tough. That ended up being a pretty tough little maiden yeah. uh, 25 last time. And I don't know. He... he he, 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 I thought he, he ran well going long, two starts back, and it wasn't the best of races, but still he ran reasonably yeah. well. And one big promise goes in blinkers. There is some upside. At least he's only had one start in his life. He's bred to run long. He's promise a half-sister yeah. to, 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 to uh, touching promise. 
and uh, you know, good work in 48 and two in Pedro sticks. I, I don't love anyone in there, but I, just, I can see any of those three winning yeah. one, four, and five in race number three. On to the fourth race, uh, four thousand dollar non race of three. Colson Geldings here going a mile and a sixteenth. Uh, I ended up on the one, Lord Galovic, and. Uh, Kind of an obvious pick again. Lost to Tapasero, who was well meant that day and ran a good race. And Lord Galvik looked like a winner that day. Tapasero I know this just Tapasero just ran him down late, burned yeah. him on the outside. And uh, but Lord Galvik ran a while. Uh, I, I got to go to him to win it. Stone Ridge Raider. It looks there's not much between those two. And I put Wee Harry in for third. I mean, it was a pretty impressive performance last time for Bob Roman and uh, the source. You know, he ran a fast time once again on a, a track that was. Faster than the norm. Yeah. And on the, you saw on the sunny side and holy shroot we were behind him. There wasn't, you know, it wasn't the toughest of maiden race or non twos, but, but still. But he did win it by five. Still, he's going so the right yeah. way. Yeah. I went one, four, and two. Uh, didn't once again another race where, you know, it was hard to really. There was no wise guy horse in the race. Yeah. I mean, I had, looks like you know Cardio Real I can't take Western Who I have trouble taking and Coriandum I have taken those are the other three horses and it's so it's got to be one four two. That's I got the same horses. I got Lord Galvic on top, as you mentioned, looked like a winner last time and was unlucky to lose to Tapasero, ran a monster race running mm -hmm. him down in the final strides. I put Wee Harry in the second spot off of that yep, good effort. And uh, Stone Ridge Raider for me in the third spot. Same horses, different order. I went one, two, and four in the fourth. On to the fifth. Maiden, thirty five thousand dollar race for two year olds. I went to the seven here, Power Corrupt out of the Mike Anderson barn. I thought he took a big step forward in his second race. Uh, only going to be a length and a quarter. It was a restricted stake, but it was a mm -hmm. stake. Uh, got a big 57 buyer for that. I put him on top. Don't tell my husband. Gets Pedro Alvarado. <coughs> Excuse me. Goes on Lasix. Comes out of a very live race. That Ebony Warrior, Fear of the Cat, Ciudo Eau Claire, won on Derby Day. Uh, lots of like about Don't Tell My Husband. And Princess O Prado, the other Mike Anderson horse. First time starter. Well-bred uh, daughter, actually, one of, the, one of the girls. I went to the girls' second and third. Well, there's six fillies and only two boys. Yes, race, it's actually. more of a girls' race, but yeah. uh, I land on one of the boys, and I put yeah. Princess O Prado, daughter of Patio Prado. They paid twenty-two thousand for yep. at uh, Keeneland, Durbin. and Mike's always done well buying horses. Mike Wielden, I mean, buying horses in Kentucky. I went seven, two, and one. Yeah, I probably was. It's an error to leave the seven power corrupt off the ticket. I don't have that horse in the top three, but I can definitely see the horse winning. Did get a nice trip in behind the speed, but those were against, you know, pretty seasoned horses. And uh, you know, like I said, it could be a, an error. But I went to the two. Don't tell my husband. Yeah. Uh, I thought a pretty good effort behind Ebony. I like anything coming out of the Ebony Warrior Fear of the Cat race. Yeah, that was a tough And uh, this horse goes on Lasix. A couple of works since. This horse was scratched on BC Cup Day, and. Uh, Obviously, something was amiss, but the horse, uh, you know, obviously is that that is behind her. And uh, Pedro Alvarado will ride, so I'm going to go. Don't tell my husband to win it. I put the one pa Princess Oprado in for second. Uh, pretty impressed, you know, by the breeding and uh, you know, work tab's pretty consistent. You know, going every six or seven days. And, and uh, yeah, and like long, see that pattern. Be fit enough, yeah. And uh, definitely a horse that uh, could could make some noise in this race. And I put the, the Rob Gilker filly in here, Manhattan fashion, a uh, filly by Old Fashioned, out of a speedy mare called Ivy Lane. And uh, this one could have some upside as well with Amadeo Perez. But I went 2-1-6, and six, but uh, yeah, the seven horse power crop definitely is in play too. It's one of those races where you gotta play a few horses. Wow, the yeah, early four agree, races yeah. on the card were quite easy and simple. This is the more difficult race and there's a lot of options in this one. So have a look at it. Six fillies and two Colts and As Geldings well as the, the sixth. So you can make a case for a few of them in the sixth. Yes, uh, three year olds in for 25,000 going a mile on a 16th. This is a non-two, it's an optional, optional claim. Yeah. There's non-two uh, uh, open and non-three BC bread and uh, uh, I ended up on the six horse Merlot uh, this horse fits the non 3 BC bread as, as does my runner up horse the one Creus but uh, Merlot looks like he's going to get a very nice pace to run at my only concern about him is the fact that he did not run on BC <coughs> Cup Day. He was yeah. nominated. Obviously, there was a hiccup. You know, he would have been in the race for sure. Yeah, I would have fit well in there uh, too. Yeah, but uh, I respect the horse's ability. He's a good you know, solid off the pace horse. The family's been good. The connections have been doing great. Uh, I, I like Merlot to defeat maybe the one Creus who ran a much better race last time in the Stellar's Day. He is coming back in 13 days, but still a horse that will be reunited with Pedro Alvarado. Uh, 
you know, this horse has got, got some speed, but there is speed in here. You got Sedin's pretty quick. The odds are good is going with Fast. the apprentice. Every Morales. night's a blur. Every night's a blur is a is a blur. And Forestry's Devil likes that. His pace is going to be quite warm, which will help Merlot, I think, which yeah. might just tip that's what tipped me towards Merlot over Creus. Because both are very good, very, very good. Actually Creus is probably a little better horse. Yeah. But uh, just the way the, the the race may play out. Merlot may get the money. And I put the five horse Peace Arch in for third. Thought a pretty good effort going along down in Seattle. Gets back at his home base. Uh, good works as well. I went six, one, and five. I just flip up your top two. I couldn't decide myself. Yeah. I think maybe Creus, though, doesn't necessarily need the lead. He could sit just off of a fast yeah. pace and have first run at him. Uh, that's why I took Creus on top of Merlot, but very tough to separate those two. Those look like the two uh, really tough ones in her. And uh, I put every night's a blur in. I know there looks like a lot of speed, but I was impressed. That race last time for 25, he absolutely wired him in a good time of 17 flat. And you know what it's like? A lot of times when it looks like a lot of speed in the race, then somebody goes, and there mm -hmm. isn't much speed. And, and, and if he gets on the lead by himself, he's going to be tough to catch. I put him in the third spot. I went one, six, and eight in the sixth. On the seventh, Phillies and mares, $4,000 claiming non-two event, going six and a half furlongs. I went to the one Queen Militant. Uh, that race two back behind Notice Zen. She's knocking on the door here consistently, and this race has not come up overly tough. And uh, Queen Militant for me. I put Lover's Lear in the second spot of the Sylvia Gregory Barn. Has a race under her belt. She finally made a start this year, and then came back and worked August 9th, one, a minute and two-fifths out of the gate. That is definitely good enough uh, for this bunch, and uh, I think that puts her right in the mix. And Easter Sunday, finally got through Broker Maiden pretty comfortably last time. This is the obvious mm -hmm. next step for a four and on two. But I heard the third spot, one, three, and five for me. Yeah, I've got the same three horses. Uh, Queen Militant, I loved last time going yeah. along, and uh, I guess this horse just can't go along. This horse is a sprinter and uh, uh, returns to six and a half furlongs, and that'll be good for her, I think. Uh, I'm going to go Queen Militant to defeat Easter Sunday, who's the next logical horse, and Lover's Lira for me to run on to be third. I yeah. uh, had a tough beginning in her uh, 215 debut, but I think this horse is uh, better than that race. I went one, five, and three to close it out. Well, that'll do it for our. Analysis of the Sunday, August the 16th races at beautiful Hastings Racecourse. Next up on screen will be a quick recap of those uh, lovely little selections. Uh, back in race number one, I went to the five collateral, five, four, and three. Actually, a lot of our selections are quite similar yeah. throughout the early part of the card. Uh, race number two, I went to the three, Bays Gal, three, one, and five. Race number three, I went to the one, P.S. Betting on you over the four heart set and the five, one big promise. Race number four, the one, Lord Galavik. Uh, very impressive run last time. He's going to be tough to beat. I went one, four, and two. Race number five, the two, don't tell my husband, over the one, Princess Oprado in the six Manhattan fashion. That is the toughest race on the card, though. I went two, one, and six. Race number six, I went to the six, Merlot, over the one, Creus, six, one, five, in our feature event of the day. And in the seventh and final, I went to the one, Queen Militant, uh, one, five, and three. Up next will be my picks. There we go. In the first, I went to the five collateral over the four and the three. In the second, number three, Bay's Gal over the one and the two. In the third, I went to number four, Heartset over the one and the five. In the fourth, number one, Lord Galavik over the two and the four. In the fifth, I went to number seven, Power Corrupt over the two and the one. In the sixth, as Mike mentioned, a very good race for our feature. I went to number one, Creus over the six, Merlot, and the eight, Every Night's a Blur. And the nightcap, I agree with Mike on number one, Queen Militant over the three and the five. All right, look, thank everyone for tuning in to the uh, Sunday edition of Handicapper's Corner. Don't forget, racing resumes next Friday. Friday night. Great card. We got four stakes on the uh, Derby, Friday night uh, card. The we never have Derby stakes trial. On no, I know. We got, we got stakes races. We got the. The Richmond Derby trial. We got the Derby trial. The we Hong have the Hong Kong, Kong Jockey Girls. Club, which is the Oaks trial. Yeah. Uh, we have the uh, BC Cup Classic. Oh, that's right. We got the BC Cup and races. And the BC Cup Distaff yeah. for the two, and as well yeah. as two champions. Uh, starter series and a wine stocks kind of leading the points parade in the boys division yeah. and the Phillies is a, a little more muddled but uh, yeah the Phillies and Mares will be back in action as well as part of the $8,000 champion starter series they have one more race before their $50,000 final in early September or mid-September so uh, a great card on yeah. Friday August the 21st uh, as I mentioned four stakes races two champion series races so it's going to be a 
cool day. And then we go to, good Friday. Then we go to Monday after we're that. Monday after There'll that. There'll be no racing on the Sunday, and August twenty third. Yeah. yeah, we're about into the a couple of Mondays. Monday, August the twenty fourth, and Monday, August the thirty first yeah. are both four o'clock. I believe three forty five or four o'clock uh, starts on the Monday. So uh, yeah, a little tweak to the schedule uh, coming up next weekend. But a great Friday night card. You don't don't miss it. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, as I mentioned, uh, if you can't make it out to the races, though, this weekend, the Derby Bar and Grill always has lots of specials going on. Got lots of simulcast wagering. and uh, Always Hastings on the big screen. Always got lots of goodness yeah. out here and uh, lots of drink specials, food specials, yeah. and uh, always a good, good, lively crowd here at the Derby Bar and Grill. On behalf of Drew, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We'll see, see you next time here on Handicapper's Corner.